Thanks, guys. It's an absolute uh, pleasure to be here. Um, just on um, this presentation, it's, um, it, it's largely about the future, what the, what the landscape could be. Um, it's, it's got quite a heavy tech slant. Um, personally, I'm absolutely fascinated by, by the future. Um, knowing the future is, is a complete uh, a necessity when you're playing in the online space. I mean, it changes so quickly. Eight years, we didn't have Facebook. I mean, Facebook has fundamentally changed the way we use the web. Uh, ten years ago, we never had Google, and you know, tweets used to be something a bird did. So, you know, the, the landscape has changed so quickly, and it's changing so quickly. And in ten years' time, I don't know if we're going to recognise uh, the online environment again. So, when you're playing in the space, I mean, it's absolutely essential to keep a good eye on the on the future. It's not a terribly <laughs> practical presentation. I don't think I, I know that the, the, the title of this talk was a was a how-to Friday. Um, I don't know if you're going to take a lot of practical uh, <laughs> stuff away from it. It's probably more like a where-to Friday. So this is a where-to Friday, not a how-to Friday. Um, just just a bit about uh, but about me. We started a company called Creative Spark. Um, we started about two years ago. It's uh, it's it's predominantly a digital agency. We work for these fantastic uh, brands. We've got a, a strong uh, slant towards content and media. That's, that's, the, uh, that's kind of what differentiates us as a, as a digital agency. We're about t uh, 20 people and we publish a brand called memeburn.com which looks at uh, social media, it looks at, at trends, it looks, looks at uh, um, you know the, the 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 startup scene, and it kind of looks at the the convergence of media, content, uh, brands, um, and 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 uh, innovation. And you know, Meme Burn is 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 our baby, and it's what keeps us uh, awake at night. So, just to talk about the future, a, a massive disclaimer though about uh, predictions, and you'll recognise some of these these, these quotes. Well, it was predicted in 1949 that computers would weigh 1.5 tons. Uh, the MacBook Air users in this uh, uh, office would disagree with that. Um, and that there'd be a market for maybe five computers. Well, in, that was the 1943 prediction. I don't think that's uh, the case anymore. And of course, this very famous Bill Gates quote that uh, 640K ought to be enough for anyone. I think computers these days are like 20,000 times more powerful than 640K in, in terms of memory. And of course, um, you know Ken Olson, who uh, used to run IBM, uh, didn't think there'd be any reason why anyone would want a computer in their home. So uh, predictions, particularly in the technology uh, space, uh, often uh, go horribly wrong. And that's my disclaimer, right? <laughs> so um, the the first insight I want to give, and I think a lot of you know this, is is emerging markets are are absolutely where where it's at. And I think particularly as, as South Africans, I think we should forget uh, developed markets. I think emerging markets is, is our, our hunting ground. Um, if you look at the internet, 81% of users uh, who actually use the top 10 global sites now actually come from outside the US. And we constantly refer to the US, and we talk about the states, because that's where the innovation has come from. That's, you know, Silicon Valley has given birth to the fantastic innovations um, that we see online. But the, the, the audience, the power base, is increasingly in, 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 emerging, uh, in, in emerging markets. Um, the countries that are actually adding uh, users to the, the internet um, the fastest are countries like China, India, Russia, and Nigeria um, in, in, in Africa. And that's where um, the focus should be um, in terms of uh, building online sites and building online, uh, online businesses if we want to be really successful. So as South Africans, the, 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 the BRIC countries, and we really are the tiny little S in the, in the Brazil, Russia, India, China makeup, are our hunting ground. And you know, South Africans, we've got a very special, unique hybrid eco economy. We've got a bit of the developing world, we've got a bit of the developed world, and I think that uh, uh, makes us really unique. And that make, it gives us an ability to kind of connect to the emerging market world with um, uh, developed world and Western world uh, technologies. And 
you know, we talk about the, the internet uh, penetration in this country only being 10% or 9% or 8%. You know, that's often a glass half full approach. I mean, it, 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 uh, I mean a glass half empty approach. The glass half full, of, full approach is, you know, if we've got 10% internet penetration, what about the other 90%? That means there is untold potential. And if you're an investor uh, looking to invest in a business, as particularly a startup, you don't go into to markets that are saturated, you know, where, where there are already players, where there's no potential. You look at markets or countries or areas where there's a lot of untapped potential. So as far as the internet goes, this is w one of the most exciting countries in the world because there's such untapped potential. You build a small business now, in, in, in five to ten years' time, it's going to absolutely uh, mushroom as the internet grows with it. The second insight is, um, and this is almost a crazy question, I would have never thought I'd be asking a question like this right now, but are we looking at the, at the end of the web? Is the web going to be around uh, uh, as we know it? And if you think about it, the web is actually, and I, and I, I say the web is dead more as, a, more as a joke more than anything else. I mean, you've heard that uh, phrase. I mean, uh, newspaper people are so sick and tired of hearing it. Print is dead. You know, print will be dead in 10 years' time. And I kind of say that as a joke. The web is actually going, going, to, going to die. But the web is, is, is possibly in, in, in decline at the moment. I mean, if you think about it, you know, with the whole app revolution, a lot of you bypass the web. You actually don't go to the web anymore. You know, you consume your media or you, or you have an internet experience, you know, via, via, via an application, via an iPad application or an iPhone app, app application. You bypass the web. I mean, why should the web uh, continue to exist? The web is just one presentation layer over the internet. The internet's the core. The web is just a presentation layer, one of many presentation layers um, uh, over the internet. And if you look at, if we go back in, in time, before the internet, the dominant model of computing was one of executables. You know, you had a, a program on your desktop, you'd load it up, and that would be your computing experience. Now we've moved into this zone of, 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 of the internet, uh, the cloud, and we think everything's going onto the cloud. You know, the, uh, there'll, there'll be no such thing as, a, as actually having a, uh, a desktop or a personal computing experience. It's all going onto the, the internet. Well, both those uh, models are actually problematic. It's unlikely that our computing experience is going to be purely internet-based. Um, and obviously, the whole uh, executable model, where we just had programs without internet, you know, that's obviously old-fashioned. And I want to just point out uh, uh, something, that the processing power of, of devices and computers literally doubles every 12 months. So we know we have the internet, but what about the computing powers of the actual, the computing power of the actual device that we use? Every 12 months, uh, computing power doubles. So for example, the iPad 2 is actually equivalent to a, the 1986 Cray 2 supercomputer in terms of compute, computing power. So the most powerful computer in, in the world in 1986 is equivalent to the iPad 2 that you guys hold in your, in, in your hands. I mean, that's the iPad 2. I mean, the iPad 3 is even more powerful than that. Um, and in 1993, the iPad 2 would have been one amongst the 30 fastest computers in the world. I mean, that's massive. That's absolutely massive. And that gives you a sense of how uh, 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 computers are, 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 uh, 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 and processing power is growing at an amazing uh, rate. And of course, this brings us to the question, I mean, if we're seeing such rapid development, what are we going to hold in our hands five years from now? You know, how powerful are these devices? What can they do um, in, in, in five years? So um, there, there's a very, very, very famous guy called George Colony. He's the head of a research company called uh, Forrester. Um, and I had the privilege, actually, with, with, with Michelle here to go to, go to an amazing conference in, in Paris last year uh, called Le Web. And the Forrester boss stood up and he said that the, 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 the web is going to be replaced. And the web's going to be replaced by a new type of internet experience called the app internet. And that is a combination of the cloud, the internet, and a combination of this amazing processing power of these devices. So, um, and, and, and why would it be? Well, that kind of combined internet experience and that uh, device experience translates into a faster, simpler, and a lot more of an immersive experience. It's a much 
better experience. And this will be the dominant architecture of the future. And this will eventually replace the web. So if you think about it, I mean, I don't know, who's, who's aware of HTML5 here? OK, so, so HTML5 is, is often, often uh, it, it's almost a, a cloud, uh, it's a cloud solution to re almost replacing uh, uh, ap applications. And if you think about it, um, HTML5 is purely a, uh, a, a cloud, an internet-based solution, but it actually fails to use the incredible power of the devices that, that we use. So HTML5, if you think about it, is a lot of hype about it. It's, it's, it's the most amazing thing ever, but it's actually not the best use of, 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 of the device that you have. It doesn't lead to the best experience, and it never will. The best experience for, to, to building uh, uh, brands online or building um, applications online is to use that amazing processing power of the, of, of the device um, with, with the cloud, uh, aka the internet, uh, uh, plugged in. The next insight is that I think search engines are, are not coping, and search engines are actually losing, losing the war. And by search engines, I'm not actually talking about search engines, I'm actually talking about one search engine, and that's Google, the most, the most dominant uh, search engine. Uh, who of you have heard of AltaVista? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I don't feel too old. <laughs> so AltaVista was, was an amazing search engine. It was one of the early, early search engines. It was a pre-Google search engine. It, it was created by a company uh, called Wired, uh, who probably shouldn't have been in the search engine game, but that's another story. Um, but it was an amazing search engine. It was one of the best search engines. But it was so difficult to find good stuff on, on the web. The web before Google was a horrible place. You know, it was, it was actually routinely dismissed as low quality. You couldn't get the right information. And the, 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 the good information was there. It's just that we couldn't access it. Along came Google. And Google saved the web. Google worked out a way to get the most important stuff to us. I mean, there's so much dreck on, 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 on the web. And it's fantastic. It, it, uh, that like low quality content and dreck belongs on the web. And there are, are, are niches that they serve. But you know, for, 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 for the majority of the web experience, we want the good stuff. And Google found a way to create the good, st the good stuff. In many senses, Google is the web. Google is the, 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 the web. It's the gateway to the web. It, it gives us the web experience. And when Google fails, and when Google's failing, the web is failing. Um, and here's a, this is actually quite a controversial uh, uh, a, a, a quote, and it generated quite a lot of d d debate. I'm not so worried about the, the detail, but I think the point here is made. Um, Eric Schmidt, the, the chairman of, of, of Google, um, mentioned that about five exabytes of information was, has, has been created since the dawn of civilization to 2003, just before the internet was, was created. Five exabytes, that's about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's about uh, a million, a million, a million terabytes, or a billion terabytes. Um, so all that information that was created since the beginning of, of, of the, since the dawn of, of man through to the start of the internet is now created every two days. We replicate that information every two days. So the amount of data that we are creating is absolutely massive, and it's increasing every day. So what he's trying to say is we actually are not ready for the technology revolution that's going to happen. And uh, it's estimated that the world will, will reach the, the zettabyte uh, threshold by the end of, of, of 2015. And just to put that in context, if you take, a, take a, 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 a cup of coffee and you say that equals one gigabyte, well, then a zettabyte would be the same as the, the Great Wall of China, which I think is just quite hard to actually conceptualize. And the zettabyte is, is only one standard of, of, of measurement. There's actually a bigger uh, uh, standard of measurement called the yottabyte. Look, we deal in, in, in gigabytes. We deal, deal in terabytes. We've only started to hear about petabytes in, in, in the real world, but then there's etabytes and there are yottabytes. And a yottabyte is one quadrillion gigabytes. So I, I, when we start talking about yottabytes, we are talking about a fundamentally different type of internet experience, fundamentally different ways of understanding and processing inf information. So what I'm trying to say is, is why Google's failing, the search engines, engines are, are failing, is there's just, so, there's just such an overwhelming 
uh, amount of data to sift through, and it's not getting any better. The other problem that's happening is Google's paid rank is, is being gamed like it's never been gamed before. And uh, there's, a, there's a practice called search engine optimization. And there's a good part to search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is, is quality content, good web development practice, and, 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 and good communication with the search engine. Bad search engine optimization is, is, is low quality content, is um, uh, creating false links. It's trying to trick Google into thinking that you're a bigger site and a better site that, than, than you really, really are. And this is, a, this is purely anecdotal, but there are countless uh, examples like this. About two and a half years ago, I didn't know I needed to buy a house. I, we just moved down to Cape Town. I didn't know whether I should, we should build a house, if it was a bad idea to build a house in a recession, or we should buy a house. And of course, I went to trusted Google to try and find this uh, um, uh, in, in, in information. And I was absolutely blown away by how much rubbish uh, search results I found. And in fact, one of, the, one of the key results that caught my eye, right now is the time to build a new home. I thought, well, that looks like it's very, very interesting information. And I went to the site, and the site is www.abdominalbench.org. What on earth <laughs> does that have to do with building a house? And I was like, well, what's going on here? You know, Google didn't find like the top expert on the financial mail who talks about uh, a property. Google found, found some random bloody site in some random country talking about buying a home in a recession. And there was the article. And I looked at the article and I scanned that article and it was absolutely clear that it was a, 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 a low quality article that was written primarily to get me to this ab site to buy uh, the ab machine. And, and uh, yes, I did. <laughs> no, I didn't. So, um, can't you see? <laughs> um, so, and, and there are countless examples of, of this online, you know, and that is that, you know, w what's actually happening here is we've lost res respect for content. Content is being used as a means to an end to get people to, 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 to buy stuff. Uh, not to inform, not to entertain, um, and you know it's a big problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a big problem on a web, and it's it's killing Google. Google's uh, implemented Panda, uh, in implemented Panda, Panda 2 to try and uh, um, combat this, but um, the 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 reality is that Google is losing. It's the world against Google. Google cannot cope. Google had this image of these these amazing. Um, uh, engineers, and they do have amazing engineers, you know, uh, that uh, keep refining their algorithm, their, their page rank al algorithm, and, and building all sorts of tests, and they bring out Panda to, to try and, uh, you know, uh, judge the quality of, of, of the content. But the reality is, it's just there are too many people gaming Google. I mean, it's literally the world against Google. Google cannot win. Um, and you know, it doesn't mean it's the end of Google the company. I just think it's the end of Google, the, the, the search engine as we know it. And, you know, even Google by its own admission is looking at other means of, of, of ranking search results. So Google's actually uh, moving away from algorithm and looking at, 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 um, at areas such as, such as social. So Google Plus, for example, is a, is a great way to get information about what people are thinking uh, about, about the web, what people think the best links are, what people think quality, quality, qu quality links are, and they're taking that social data and plugging it back in into the search engine. What we also might see... It's also Microsoft uh, Bing. Uh, two days ago, they just released, released uh, like a Facebook plugin in for their yeah. Bing search in, in the US. So if you're searching for, you know, what should I do in Hawaii, it'll search all of your Facebook friends' data um, so there's, there's, there's this social that's being plugged in, but we also might uh, move towards more closed ecosystems, um, such as you might see Google News or, or Google Scholar coming to m more the fore. Why? Because um, that gateway is, is, a, is, a, is a guarantor of quality. I don't know why I chose this picture, by the way. Um, <laughs> Do any of you come from Heart Bay? 
there was the sardine run in Hart Bay, and these are the sardines that actually washed up on the shore. And I, I took a picture of it. I think I used it because these are all the dead search results. But <laughs> um, okay, so that takes me to the next point, which is there's, 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 a, there's a war going on in terms of the ecosystems. You know, and we're looking at, the, at closed ecosystems versus open as uh, ecosystems. And I think closed systems, unfortunately, and, and I say unfortunately with a heavy heart, are on, 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 the, on the way back. I mean, we had this wonderful utopian vision about the web that everyone was a publisher, everyone was generating content. It would be this amazing uh, experiment where everything rises to, to the top. And the reality is, is as, the, as the web goes mainstream, uh, we've realized that um, uh, uh, the quality is actually ac ac actually dropped. I mean, we've got Wikipedia tightening up. Um, we've seen what Apple does with the closed ecosystem. Apple is criticised, you know, for having such a closed, tightly controlled uh, 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 um, ecosystem in its Apple App Store and its in its system. And Apple, what does Apple say? Well, it's a guarant guarantor of quality, and we like it because it is it is high quality. So we're seeing the arrival back of. Of a, of, of a closed e e ecosystem. Um, so is the open web dying? Are we opting for closed ecosystems with control and regulation uh, in the age of information overload? Everyone's a publisher, um, uh, but do we want to read uh, what everyone has to say? Absolutely not. Uh, so in many senses, we thought the web was different. We thought the web was going to change the way we do things. But the reality is the web's actually just fitting in with, with, with the way we've been doing things in, in, in the past. It's, art, it's, a, it's a question of art mimicking uh, life. And, and, and the web isn't uh, so different from real life after all. And then we've got the... Uh, uh, the social revolution. We've talked about the social revolution. The social revolution is upon us. But the inevitable social bubble is not far off either. So on, on Meanburn, and Mich Mich Michelle will, will tell you this, we often, uh, often our, our biggest referrer of traffic is, is, op is people. I mean, in, in the old days, it used to always be a search engine, always be Google. In fact, even in the old days before Google, it used to be your home page. The home page is what people went to. Now people aren't bothered with the home page. They, they bypass the home page and go directly to articles via search engines. But increasingly, we see the biggest referrers of traffic to our site are people. Facebook, Twitter, people re referring traffic. So social has been really, really big. But a problem that we, we have is that we are simply running out of time. We're human beings. We've only got so much time to give to these applications. I mean, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, some of us on Foursquare, some of us on, on, on Mixit, and so on and so forth. I mean, is there space for more social applications? And then in 10 years' time, even more social applications? The reality is that we're running out of time to give to these social applications. I mean, this, these, this is stats from Forrester that I thought was very interesting. Social networking is now consuming, on average, more time than we spend communicating on the phone, writing emails, uh, even doing uh, old school mail, even going, doing, doing activities like, like, like church, and even ac exercising. Um, and in, in the States, um, um, social networking is, just a, is, is, is taking up just a little bit less time than we, we spend on doing the shopping and, and, and stuff like, like childcare. So it's taking up a lot of time. And we're also running out of people to, to add to these social, social networks. So if you look at social pen pen penetration in many countries, in certain emerging market territories such as Asia or South America, it's <coughs> upwards of 90%. In the US and Europe, it's around 80%. So we don't have any more space for more social ap ap applications. We don't have time. And at this uh, conference in, in, in Paris last year, the, uh, for the um, Forrester boss, uh, George Colony, caused a huge stir when he actually said stuff like Foursquare is nonsense. You know, it, it doesn't add value to our, 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 our life. It wastes, our, wastes our, 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 our time. And he predicts that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go into a post-social era. Um, and uh, stuff like Foursquare is going to literally be swept away. And... Uh, the social applications that are going to win, uh, win prominence and succeed are, are, are a next wave of social applications that are more uh, efficient and, and actually uh, aim to save us time. Insight 6, and this in many ways is, is already, already, already happening. Um, 
tablets, phones, um, are actually set to become the brains, the brains of everything, uh, the brains of all our digital devices. So there's going to be battles for new platforms. Uh, there's been, we know about the PC battle, we know about the tablet battle, we know about the phone battle. Right now there are, are battles playing out to own the TV platform. Uh, Samsung's probably winning that uh, by, by a long stretch. Uh, what about the car? What about the car interface and the car <coughs> digital display? That really uh, is a battle that still needs to, to shape up, like a, like a car operating system. We spend so much time in our cars, that's probably the next big um, area where there's going to be a battle between the major tech companies. Then forget about cars. What about the digital displays on tables? Um, what about uh, digital displays everywhere? So when I say that um, you know, your, your tablet device, your phone will become the brains, uh, brains of, 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 um, of all devices, well, this is quite a crude expression of it. I mean, you can buy this in, at, at Hi-Fi Corporation. You know? Like, uh, forget, the, um, the, um, forget the old analog uh, radio or TV. You plug your device, device into it. I mean, even your car, you perhaps plug, you, uh, uh, plug your iPad or your, or your phone, it becomes the brain of your car. Um, even your, even your, 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 your house, I've seen systems where, where people literally plug their iPads into the wall and it controls everything in, in, in their house. Uh, even uh, when you, uh, 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 you know, pay for your, your groceries or your, or your coffee, you know, these devices are actually replacing the tr traditional old uh, technology and becoming the brains of our operations. Um, and it's not just about your phone plugging into exist your, your car or into your house or into your shop. Um, it's literally a battle to control um, all platforms. So micro, Microsoft, for example, is experimenting with uh, what it calls Microsoft Surface. I mean, obviously, Microsoft's making a bet that there's going to be a war to control all surfaces. So the surface, this, this table. Uh, this wall, for example, and Microsoft's done a lot of experimenting with Microsoft Surface. Google it, ha ha have, a, have a look at it. So during the next 10 years, and this is a quote from Gartner, uh, tablets will take on new functions and they'll become the, almost the cross-platform uh, controller and the brain for all electronics and, and computers. Uh, the, the next insight is the smartphone wars. I mean, People often say, well, why are you so obsessed with smartphones? Um, it's actually a criticism that we get on Meme. Why, why do you care so much about smartphones? Because the reality is, what, 10%, 15% of the market are using smartphones. Well, yes, that's now, but the smartphones are literally the future. It's going to be the cheapest computer uh, uh, in the world. Smartphones will be ubiquitous. They will be everywhere. And of course, we're concerned about the future. We're concerned about where, 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 it's, where it's going. Um, and if you look at the current, uh, uh, who's winning the smartphone wars, well, obviously Android, an open source uh, operating system uh, via Google, is, 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 is winning, the, the, winning the war. It's getting, getting the most traction, with Apple coming in uh, number two. And right at the bottom, you, you see Microsoft starting to show its, uh, show, its head, show its head with Windows Phone. And then, of course, uh, Symbian with only 1% market share and rapidly uh, on its way out. So if you want to know the next best, best for the future, um, I think Microsoft, uh, believe it or not, is on the comeback trail in a massive way. Windows Phone is a, is a, is a, is a beautiful operating system. It's being lauded. Windows 7 and Windows 8 has had an excellent uh, uh, and, and positive uh, reception. And this is not the Microsoft we, we know. I'm used to bashing Microsoft. Microsoft are so absolutely uncool. Their stuff doesn't work. And they copy other people. I mean, Bing is a laughable, ridiculous copy of Google. I mean, it's pathetic. There's no innovation in that company. But uh, Windows Phone is something different. It's something special. It looks good, and it's innovative. And Microsoft have done well. Now, here's the, the, the stock graph of Apple. Here's the stock graph of, of Microsoft. And I guess we're celebrating what Apple's been doing. They've done amazing things to the market. And Microsoft's kind of, you know, it's just been, uh, just been going along, not very successful. But Microsoft is a lot better at business th th than, than Apple. Uh, Apple might have the shiniest uh, and most beautiful products, but that doesn't necessarily uh, translate into success. 
um, and I, I refer back to the um, the original Mac versus versus DOS. Who who knows about DOS here? Okay, so <laughs> feeling like a young gun. So um, I mean, if you remember when we had DOS, what was this, this horrible black screen with orange and green writing? I mean, like I didn't know how to use it. My parents were, were clueless, and then you had like uh, the the Apple Mac. It was one of the most beautiful. It, it was intuitive. It was. It, it, it looked. It, it looked great. It was. It was special. It. 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 It, it was way better than, than DOS. It was way better than this, this shitty Microsoft uh, 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 product. But which one? Which operating system won? The worst one won. Not the shiniest, better looking one. Because um, Microsoft actually had better business practices. It built a much better ecosystem with the device manufacturers. Having a shiny, beautiful product doesn't necessarily mean your product's gonna, 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 going to win. It's, 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 it's how you conduct, it's the business that you build, build around it. Having a shiny, better product means you, you will win in the short term. But what actually happens is people catch up to you. They compete and they actually um, uh, eventually take over if they've got better business practices. And I will argue that Microsoft is starting to rapidly catch up to, to Apple. And if you want to know where to put your money, uh, I wouldn't buy in, in, in Apple. That stock is saturated. It's, it's, it's gone. It's too high. I would put your, put, your, put your money in a stock that's been underperforming, um, that has lots of potential. Uh, and again, you look at uh, Win Microsoft with Windows Phone, which is a really beautiful, good-looking, innovative uh, operating system. When you look at a company like that who's teamed up with one of the largest cell phone manufacturers in the world, Nokia, and it seemed like a crazy decision at the time, but it now seems like a brilliant decision, you, 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 you realize that, that, that something special is, 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 is going to happen. And every 10 years, we, we see an established tech company that we think is dead, dead out of the water um, and, and never coming back. They reinvent themselves and they come back even stronger. Cisco, it happened to Cisco, it happened to IBM. IBM completely changed their business models, one of the most successful companies in the world. We wonder if that uh, company is going to be Microsoft. Is Microsoft going to be the, the big comeback kid in the future? And I think so. And my argument is when Microsoft which is really, really good at business, much better business than Apple, gets things right and gets its products right. Because for the first time in a long time, Microsoft has got its products right. Windows 7 works well. Windows 8 looks beautiful. Windows Phone actually looks good. I mean, who, who here used Windows Mobile 3? I mean, with that stylus and you, I mean, it was awful. It was a joke. Um, but uh, 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 Microsoft still somehow uh, manages to, 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 to get products out there that are, that are inferior and makes a relative success out of inferior products. But Microsoft's latest offerings, they're excellent. And combined with its powerful uh, business acumen and these really, really good looking uh, products, I think Microsoft is going to be uh, a, a, big, a, big, uh, a big thing, to, a big company to watch in the future. So I want to take a big, uh, just take, take a, make a comment on on, on print, uh, where print is going. I'm from the media world. I've worked for Mail and Guardian, both a newspaper and, and online. And, you know, um, no one doubts that, that print will eventually disappear, uh, disappear. What we've got wrong is the time scale. It's taken much longer uh, to, uh, uh, for, for, for print uh, to disappear, specifically in em emerging markets. And, you know, when we say print is dead or a print will die, I, I think that's false. I don't think print will ever die, but I don't think it'll be a long, uh, a mainstream media, uh, mainstream medium in the future. Print will actually niche. It won't die. Print will niche. And I often use this analogy. Um, when uh, we obviously used to use fireplaces to, uh, you know, warm our houses, then along came the electric heater, Pff, electric heater. It, it switches on a lot quicker. It's not as dirty as a fireplace. Um, so what would, the, um, what would the home heating evangelists say? They would say, the fireplace is dead. <laughs> we ha now have the heater. It will replace the fireplace. And 
The reality is that the heater didn't ever replace the fireplace. The fireplace is, is a different experience, a, tr a traditional experience. It provides something different. And I think that the, the web, the internet, is much like a heater, and print is much like a fireplace. It will always be around, it will niche, it will be uh, a, a specific e experience. And I think newspapers and magazines will find a new business model. So you can expect newspapers and magazines, the print variety, to become very, very expensive. You know, much like theatre is now. If you have a look at theatre, I mean, theatre was the dominant entertainment uh, form, and then along came, came the whole movie rev revolution. What happened to theatre? It didn't die. It just became bloody expensive, and it, became, it, it, and it became a niche experience. And that's what I think will happen um, uh, with print. Okay, so to, to end off, I just want to talk a little bit more about the, the evolving web. Um, the way I see it is there's probably three types of, of web or internet experience. We've got our browser experience. You type in www.kalahari.net and you, can, you see the, the catalog of shopping and you can choose what to buy. Then you get the virtual experience and that's where you go into a virtual shop and you can, your, your avatar can pick something off, off, off a, shelf, a shelf and that's, uh, that's associated with um, um, uh, uh, programs or software like Second Life, which hasn't really taken off because, you know, speeds are not where it should be, like worldwide, for something like a, like a, like a virtual world. And, um, and, you know, graphics cards aren't where they should be. So the, the, the virtual world internet experience could come back in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a huge way when computer processing power is ready for it properly. But then we get the augmented uh, web, and that's something that excites me uh, a, a tremendously, a, a, a tremendously, and that's where the web is not in the browser and it's not in a virtual world. It becomes a layer over the, the, the real world, and that's what we know as augmented uh, reality. You know, and it's bizarre because I used to put these slides up before we had something like the iPad, um, and it's amazing to see how uh, you know, how this has evolved, and there's a little bit of reality here. Um, but we may look at a situation where we have um, uh, tablet devices that we can just point at objects, and it, it gleans nutritional information about it, for example. It measures the size of, 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 of an apple or a banana. It, it picks up an RFID chip in that apple or banana, finds out where it's from, um, how old it is, uh, it does some kind of analysis with it. You could point it at, at, at words or objects and actually get information uh, about the, the real world. You could point it at buildings and work out who's in the building, who's on, on, on which floor. Uh, uh, the way we get news will absolutely change. So for example, um, we used to going to News 24 and we get uh, um, kind of national news and then when I want news about the place I live in, Hart Bay, I open up the, the Gazette. But what happens if I want news about that street corner, that street corner, that, that street corner, or that little, that, the four meters in front of that shop? And we'll go to an area where you can actually literally get news about any object in the world. Uh, a, a little meter of, of strip, you'll be able to get news about it. Why? Because you'll be able to point your device at it and it will pull information about that specific area um, you know, from, from the internet. And that'll be from uh, um, trawling the internet, um, the, the vast amounts of data that we've got, finding that data um, and, and matching it to that particular area. It will look at what people are saying about that particular area. I'll be able to go to a, a street corner, point my device at it, and I'll know that Michelle w was there. And Michelle had something nasty to say about that shop, for example. And this is uh, how I think news is going to evolve. It's going to become absolutely uh, 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 hyper-local um, and we'll be able to get um, absolutely detailed information about the, the, the areas we, we live in. Um, just, to, just to end off, um, when I was at 24.com, um, I decided to do an experiment with a very talented de designer called uh, Philip Langley. And uh, 24 Labs was a, um, a kind of a... Uh, like a, a, a test bed for like startup innovations within a, within a corporate, 24.com. And we decided to think, well, what happens if we took the world of augmented reality and we took the world of social networking and we combined them? What would actually happen? And the, the results were quite interesting because 
you would be able to point our device at someone and immediately be able to get, pull up information about what they've been saying on Twitter, be able to trawl their Facebook accounts if their uh, privacy setting is, 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 is open. Uh, we'll be able to work out the Google mentions using semantic technology. We'll be able to work out what's, what's negative about them, what's positive about them. Uh, I'll be able to know what I should say, what I shouldn't say, all by just pointing my, 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 my device at them. And of course, facial recognition, well, it's, it's happening. I mean, whoever owns Picasso, whoever uses Picasso, will know that uh, facial recognition is, is, is available, but it'll obviously get uh, a, lot, a lot better. Um, and we'll be able to see who I've got in common. So I'll be able to, to just look at someone. I'll be able to look at all of you. Perhaps I won't even use my phone. It'll just be a, a contact lens that I've got on my eye. I'll be able to look at you and I'll instantly be able to know what movies you like, wh which people we have in common. You know, what, what horrible things people are saying about you, what fantastic <laughs> things people are saying about you. Um, and it's going to be quite a scary world, a very transparent world. You know, privacy is going to be a, a, a big issue. You'll be able to point your device at a house, you know, work out what, um, what, 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 uh, who the residents of that house are, quite possibly. Work out what people are saying about that, that uh, neighborhood, for example. I mean, house prices are actually uh, publicly, it's publicly available information. So I could technically just point my phone or even just look at a house and instantly know how much that house costs. Um, uh, you, in, even in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a group situation. So I could point my phone literally at you guys or, or look at you through my augmented reality contact lenses. <laughs> it's coming, coming, 10 years. Um, and I'll be able to you know, just see like tweets popping up uh, above your heads as you guys are, 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 are writing them. I'll be able to work out who the clicks are in the room, you know, who, who's friends with whom, who's, who's kind of an outsider. You, you guys will like kind of highlight different colors. I'll be able to work out the, 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 the different networks. And of course, th there's massive privacy issues with this. So this is really just a concept in, 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 in investigation of, of how, things, how things could be. But I think this is a really, really exciting expression of the internet and a really, really exciting expression of, of, of a new type of web that we'll look at. I mean, it's quite interesting because Augmented reality is more promise than reality. I mean, we're, we're an agency, so we often get clients saying, oh, we need augmented reality. And I can tell you something, it's a fantastic little checkbox to check when you want to win an award. But the reality is we're not there yet. Augmented reality is still a, uh, it, it, you know, uh, the, the, the devices aren't, aren't good enough. There's not enough information. Um, you know, it's not seamless uh, enough at the moment. So this is more promise than reality at the moment. So what we are looking at in terms of a future web is a, is a web that literally bursts out of the browser and, you know, and, and literally breaks through the confines of apps. Uh, it, it'll be a web that doesn't even exist on your, your, your computer or your phone, but it actually it'll be a, a web and an internet that's actually out there and, and all around us. And that's a fun, fundamentally different internet and, and web experience. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> You're not allowed to ask a question. <laughs> no, no, of course you can. Uh, I was actually, it's quite fascinating with the, because I remember, you know, with your colleague was talking about that, like the whole room was like, whoa, what's this about, you know, Foursquare? And I think Foursquare is actually trying to um, preempt that, because they know it's coming. So at the end of the day, we will get bored of checking into things and finding out where we are. And they released a new version yesterday which they have turned is, is more than check-ins now. It's like social recommendation. I, I, I go into my Foursquare now and it tells me, you know, you should check out Julep because, you know, Chris has been there, Des has been there, and they think it's really fun. So it's changing how you, you, um, people use the apps. I'm thinking people definitely, they do know that, you know, social apps like Foursquare and Path and stuff like that will die out because eventually we will see the point. So they are, I think, preempting that. Trying to and evolve. Building, trying to build something that can work in that world where the app is so efficient that you can't live without it. Mm. So, but definitely, I know Foursquare is something. Does everyone know what Foursquare is? Okay, good. <laughs> how, how many of you like started it and then it kind of um, fell by the wayside? 
seems like a great novelty, but I mean, how, how much relevance is it to your life? I mean, it was, it was quite a shocking thing when, when they stood up and said four squares nonsense and we'll die because four squares is seen as one of the great um, social, local, mobile innovators. And Michelle actually met um, and interviewed the head of Foursquare. Yeah, when we interviewed who, him, it was quite interesting what he said because we were like, so is it going to change from the game? And it's like, well, it's more than a game. Oh, I don't see it. Yeah. So. But I think the, 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 their moves to change that um, their, their platform, it's, it's, it's quite possibly... Uh, uh, a, a response to that. So what do you think about um, you know, ultra light or net, like these ultra light books or something? What is it in terms ultra of? Ultra books. Yeah, ultra books. Yeah. Because like there's, it's, it seems, I don't know, I don't know whether anyone else has seen this, but if you look at Microsoft and Intel and a lot of these kind of companies, particularly Intel, they've invested tons and tons of cash into promoting ultra books. So like in the next few months, you'll see tons of ads for that. But if you, uh, if you look at what people are buying, it's all tablets. Okay then, what do you, do you think that's going to change? Do you think they're going to win that? Or do you, I, I, I mean, we, we ran a piece of meme burn the end of the PC, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we believe that? We, we said that Ultrabooks might kill PC and it might have a war with tablets, but God has said so. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I don't know what you think. Personally, I think it's a very fine line because Ultrabooks like tablets, I mean, when tablets first came out, it was this thing that only really early adopters got into. And now you get into every man tablet mm. that's coming out with their cash and stuff like that. So I personally, I think in the future, you know, if Microsoft, like you said, gets its products right and gets oh, teamed up with the right people, Ultrabooks might become the norm. I mean, what are we talking about? A, a keyboard, right? Yeah. Basically. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference the between an Ultrabook and an iPad a is a keyboard. But that keyboard makes it, like you were saying, that it's much easier. You know, I can put this in my, on my wall or whatever. But yeah. Suddenly, when it's got a keypad, like I can't do that anymore. Mm. Unless the keypad folds mm. up behind it. Mm. Mm. I mean, it could be wireless as well. You put it there, pad somewhere else that you need. Yeah. Look, I think eventually an iPad and an Ultrabook and a, a PC, I, I think eventually they'll all just become the same thing. You know, with a, with a keyboard that is, is a is attachable, de detachable. And I mean, you're looking at a, you know, like a, a fundamentally more powerful device, um, you know, than, than, than we have now, for example. You know, we're looking at a, an iPad with, you know, like a couple of terabytes of, 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 of uh, storage, for example. So, um, yeah, I mean, what will it look like in the future? I think they'll be the same thing. So yeah, but if anyone wants to uh, uh, get in touch, just let me know. But um, I, I would suggest like having a little look at, at Meme Burn uh, at least a couple of times a week. It just kind of helps us really find out where things are going, both from a social media point of view and from a tech point of view. And that, that always helps us. It'll help educate yourselves. It also helps keep us ahead of competition. Um, but anyway, thanks so much for coming. And thank you. Cool. Thank you. Cheers.